All right, next question is from Michael B. on Instagram. He asks, has your practice routine changed at all over time? I've always been told that you can get better at practicing, but still don't think I totally understand what that means. (laughs) Yeah, I hear you, man. That's always a weird phrase, right? Getting better at practicing. So in my eyes, getting better at practicing involves getting to know yourself. That's a big part of it, right? Like getting to know your own habits and inclinations, some of your bad habits. Like, what do you do during a practice session that makes this go wrong? Because everybody's got got their vices, right? Like things that just distract you or little habits that you build. Like I've heard it referred to as like drummer ADD before where you just, you're practicing, 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 and then all of a sudden you're doing that fill that you've been doing for the last three years. Like, or you're just chopping out for no reason, or you're going to that go-to groove that you play way too much. That sort of thing happens all the time. So identifying what your distractions are, like what your weird, I guess like, I don't know. Yeah, distractions is probably the right word. The right word. Like what, what are you distracted by most often? What pulls you away from that focused center of real practice? Identifying that is going to be super helpful. Um, and that takes a, a painful amount of self-awareness too. You got to be really honest with yourself. And sometimes a teacher can help with that as well. So private lessons or even just filming yourself, really, that can help as well, right? You'll, you can watch the video back and be a little bit more objective and go, huh, I see where I'm, where I'm messing this up here. So that, that can be really helpful. But for me, my practice routine has changed a little bit over time. One thing that I've that I've incorporated that I cover extensively in the Practicing 101 Masterclass um, is taking breaks. You know, I'm a huge believer in taking breaks. I used to think that, you know, the highest level drummers, the best practicers in the world probably spent six, seven, eight hours practicing straight. I mean, how else does Matt Garska get that good? He must just plop his ass on the throne for eight hours and that's all he does. But in reality... You know, I learned this in uh, in a behavioral science class in college. You know, like this idea of cramming, of just forcing the information down your throat or into your brain, it really doesn't work. It doesn't work on on like a neurological level. That's just not how your brain works. So for me, I've found that this clogged sink analogy is the most helpful way to look at this. So if you think of your brain as a clogged sink, you know, if the pipes are only moving water down so fast, pouring a bunch of water on the top doesn't really work. Maybe you can fill the sink up, but it's gonna take a little while for that water to get down the pipes. And you wanna think about this in terms of information into your brain. So you really want to put as much information into your brain as you think you can handle. That might be 10 minutes. It might be 20 minutes or 30 minutes, but it's not that long. And then you wanna take a break. You wanna completely focus on something different. That could be playing a video game on your phone, it could be calling a buddy, it could be watching a YouTube video, not a drum video. Something to completely remove your brain from this this lane that you've been in for a while. Go a different direction and then come back. And what you're doing is you're accelerating the recall of information, right? And this is a different way to think about practicing because when you think about what it is to know something, what it is to know a pattern, it's really what, one of the things that determines how well you know it is how quickly you can recall that information from the depths of your psyche. Can you quickly pull this pattern up into the forefront of your consciousness and then use it or execute it immediately? And one of the ways that you get better at accessing that filing cabinet in your mind is by choosing to recall that information repeatedly. Now, if you just bring that that pattern, that thing that you're working on, that groove, if you just bring that to the front of your mind and you keep it there for 45 minutes or an hour, and you say, I'm gonna practice this for one hour every single day. Well, you're only recalling that information from the depths of your mind one time per day. But if you said, I'm gonna practice this for 10 minutes, then I'm gonna do something different for 15 or 20 minutes, and then I'll come back to this, and you do that five times a day. Well, now you are repeating this this recall action. You're doing that five or six times in a day. And in my mind, this is one of the things that helps helps you more quickly recall that information from the filing cabinet that's in your mind. So I really like taking breaks for that reason. And of course it sounds counterintuitive because it sounds a lot like I'm telling you to practice less and to be lazier in your practice sessions. But I actually think it's a little bit harder because you have to choose to walk away from the kit and it ends up putting so much space and time in between your practice sessions that a practice session might actually take 
two or three hours because of all of these little breaks in here. But again, I think recalling the information repeatedly is one of the more helpful things that you can do. So if you want to learn more about some of my philosophies on on practicing, and there's a... Um, a masterclass on orlandodrummer.com, the Practicing 101 Masterclass is what it's called. And in there, I take you through how I personally schedule one hour of practice. And of course, I try and frame up an argument for why I think this is the best way to do it, but it is highly personalized. So I leave plenty of wiggle room in there for you to you know, customize it and make it your own. And there's a template in there as well, which will help you sort of adjust the time frame because not everybody has one hour to practice on the nose. Some days it's 40 minutes, some days it's 10 minutes, and some days, you know, it's Saturday morning and I got eight hours to kill. So however you want to structure an hour, you can use the template that's laid out in that masterclass and that will help a lot. So, um, but again, biggest point here when you're asking how has my practice routine changed, it's been customized. I would say that. It's been very, very customized. As I've learned my bad habits, my inclinations, and some of the things that I do wrong, I've made adjustments to those over time and become a lot more efficient. So that's how you get better at practicing. It's just identifying you know, who you are and what kind of dumb shit you find yourself doing behind the kit. Thank you for watching this clip from the Orlando Drummer Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're looking for more content like this, ranging from master classes to in-depth courses to rudiments, grooves, fills, interviews with pro drummers, everything you can imagine, I've got all of that waiting for you at the link in the description. Click on orlandodrummer.com and start your free seven-day trial to see what's inside. I promise you will find something you like, and I'll see you guys there.